Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, this afternoon's Global Health Compound Design Meeting. It's a very special one. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Gardner, who's going to talk about the new release of, uh, of the free BMGF PK tool. So, uh, so he, you can see on the screen, uh, this is PK tool version two. It's been completely rewritten. Uh, and Mark has put some questions up, um, which you can reply to in the chat box. Uh, you can also type questions in there and I will ask them or you can unmute yourself uh, and ask them at the end. Okay, I'll hand over to you, Mark. Great, thanks Caroline and welcome everybody. Uh, it's nice to see some uh, so many friends on the call. That's, that's great. Um, so I'm gonna go through the PK tool. Um, just because we haven't done this with Zoom before, if you're new to Zoom, there's some controls which are generally at the bottom of the screen. Um, I think everybody's muted themselves, which is great. Um, so you can also test and change audio devices down there if you want to. Uh, and as Caroline said in the chat box, um, I've asked this question. I'm gonna talk about that in a few slides time, so it probably be make, makes most sense to, to, uh, to if, you could, if you do have an opinion to answer that after I've gone through those few slides because this is a work in progress. Um, as you'll see in a minute, we're sort of halfway through the transition to the Python version of um, the PK tool. So um, on the next slide, roughly what I'm gonna go through is uh, the, the PK tool in the context of, of what you might wanna do with PK analysis and dose prediction and then um, just how to get a hold of uh, version two. And I'm gonna focus initially on what's new in version two. Um, and then uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with version one, I'm gonna go through an overview of using the tool from scratch. Um, so um, we'll talk about some examples of uh, using allometry prediction from in vitro data and also dose prediction for efficacy models. Um, if you've seen some of these before, there's quite a lot of reference material. I've included a little bit of it at the end of this, um, and there are also uh, plenty of links uh, through the, the talk and, and early on about where you can go for other reference material. So just a little bit of context um, about, around what the PK tool does do and what it doesn't do. Uh, the PK tool uses calculated PK parameters and other information about your compound to make human dose predictions or different species dose predictions. If you want to analyze experimental concentration time data to produce your own PK parameters, and we've previously talked about that, the PK solver is a free Excel add-in um, which uh, you can also use. So the links to that are on there and they're also on MMV website, um, which I'm just gonna show you in a second. Um, so the PK tool version two um, can be accessed from the link um, there and um, also from MMV's website. And uh, the downloadable zip file that you get to um, contains executables for Windows and Apple. So you don't have to, uh, that, that's straightforward. Um, but if you want to, uh, you can compile the PK tool from the source code. It's, it's all now in Python and there's instructions on, on how to do that if you, uh, if you really want to. I guess that's most relevant for people that um, can't easily install executables that have come from um, other websites. You will probably will get alerted to you doing unsafe things as you try to, or at least what Windows will think are unsafe things as you try to install the executable, but you can override those. And it's all been fine on my machine. Um, so accessing this through the MMV website, so MMV uh, very kindly let us um, look after the content or provide the content for one of their pages. Um, this is probably the easiest way to remember to, to get a hold of it. Uh, so it's on the MMV um, website on the computational chemistry page. Um, there are actually two there. There's one for these webinars and one for um, some guides. And uh, although this used to point to version one, now points to um, a PDF which includes a discussion and links to all the downloadables for version two. If you have a mind to, um, version one is still available um, through that link. So version one, 
was developed by Xenologic, uh, which is now part of Satara. So that was Neil Benson, Cesar Pichardo, and Tomomi Matsura. Um, and several of these slides are borrowed from them. And a lot of the thinking, obviously, around um, how the tool looks and how version 2 looks is down to those guys at uh, Xenologic and Asatara. Um, and I should also say thanks to Neil um, for answering some of the questions I had through the development of version 2 as well. Um, so version 2 has been re-implemented by uh, Stavitsa uh, Svetkovic in Python. And um, that was done for a variety of reasons. Um, mostly around the greater accessibility of, of numbers of people that um, can uh, use um, and develop uh, Python and, and making it more um, maintainable going forward. So um, there is uh, a lot of uh, documentation. That link that I mentioned is, is embedded here as well, the PDF, and it includes a bunch of things in installation instructions, links to theory slides, which some of you may have seen before, um, hands-on training uh, that was associated with version one, but much of it is still relevant. Um, in the link, you get uh, uh, some test data. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So you can just uh, plug that in and just prove that the tool works for you. Um, as I mentioned, the source code and, uh, and, and the original tool. So in terms of version two, um, we're really aiming at doing two things. One is improving with some um, additional usability features and the other is some scientific enhancements. That's the part that's still to come and which it would be useful to get your input on. Um, the usability is, is what we've included in this version. So there's improved layout and visuals, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, there's a lot more help um, through tooltips, much more extensive tooltips. Uh, there's some better screen resolution and font rendering. There were some issues with the old version, particularly on smaller screens. And um, there's some improvements to how you can navigate around the simulation plot. Um, there's also improved input and output. Uh, one of the things that used to frustrate me a lot is that the old tool didn't remember where which, which directory you'd been in. This one does, which <laughs> saves a lot of time and aggravation. Um, also, the file name is displayed, so you can use that. Um, you know, you could use a compound name, for example, associated with the file name of the, uh, the parameters. Um, and we've improved the way that the concentration time data um, exports. And there were a couple of minor bug fixes, which we've implemented as well. I'm going to go through the science enhancements now um, because the uh, the usability ones, um, you know, if you want to stick around and and, and uh, see version two in action, um, then I'll come to those in a minute. Uh, but the, the science enhancements would be really useful to get your, your feedback if you have opinions on this. So I've got a slide on each of these pretty much. Um, actually, one piece of science we have implemented, which is that you can now enter your own values for allometric scaling. Um, the default values are still 0, 1 and 0. 0.75 for KA volume and clearance um, respectively, but you can change those if you want to. Um, clearance, um, presumably the one that people would want to change most often. Um, and then we've also, we're going to, uh, we plan to implement um, a, a potential correction for uh, free fraction of um, binding in the uh, hepatocyte clearance calculation. So I'm talking about binding in the hepatocyte experiment itself, not uh, plasma binding, which is already taken account of. So we do take account of microsomal binding already, but not binding in the hepatocyte experiment at the moment. So that's a proposal to include that. Um, perhaps a more significant change. Uh, at the moment, uh, you can uh, predict dose from um, the idea that uh, you'd have uh, trough, um, you, you'd achieve CF at trough. Um, we want to implement some different ways of doing the dose prediction. And one of the things that this will help is allow you to do a dose prediction for a single dose. That's not really um, implemented in version, uh, in, the, in the current version. You have to uh, tweak some parameters with the tool to, to get you to do that. We're also thinking of uh, a bioavailability prediction, um, which is actually a proposal that Xenologic made, um, but wasn't implemented in version one. And I'll come on to that. And finally, uh, it's also been proposed that we could um, allow for prediction of um, 
microsomal and hepatocyte binding in um, uh, so I'm just noticing a red line and I went to brush it off my screen, but it <laughs> looks like somebody's drawn on it. That's fine. Um, so uh, prediction of um, uh, microsomal and hepatocyte binding from a QSAR equation uh, with log D and log P, uh, which I'll come on to. So first of all, the dose uh, calculation. So as I mentioned at the moment, um, the dose prediction assumes that you're trying to achieve a trough um, con concentration uh, equivalent to the efficacious concentration that you put in. Now I'm just going to um, check out the participants because there's a little bit of noise is off. Probably be best if we mute that. I'm not quite sure where that's. Okay, stopped. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so what we want to do is allow for people to do um, dose predictions in different ways. Um, okay, there's still a couple of noises. Let me see if I can mute everyone. Um, okay, I think everyone's going to be allowed to unmute themselves, but just for now I've, I've muted everybody. Okay, um, so dose calculation. At the moment the tool makes uh, a prediction based on needing to achieve a uh, trough concentration of, of CF. So you need to achieve CF at a trough. And we want to allow that to be done in different ways related to AUC um, and related to uh, being able to um, predict dose for a single dose compound, for example. And the way we plan to do that is to allow you to have some flexibility about the dose uh, with with these options. So at the moment, um, the top one of these radio buttons, um, C min, min equals MCF at steady state, that's pretty much what we're doing at the moment. So if you input a, 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 an efficacious concentration that you want to achieve, uh, we're going to implement actually a, an M value, so the, the multiples of CF you could put in your IC50 here, and let's say a 3 for M, then the tool would calculate uh, what dose you needed to achieve a steady state concentration that was as a minimum three times the uh, efficacious. We're also going to implement um, CAV at that multiple of, of CF. So CAV is essentially another way of saying um, AUC. Those, those two things are related and I guess Tim Smith's um, suggestion is that CAV is a more um, understandable uh, tool and another way of doing it that's a bit better. Um, and then uh, we're also going to implement the idea that um, the, the dose prediction will be done on the basis of achieving so many mul uh, multiples of CF at a specific time t. Um, so that it doesn't need to be steady state. So that might be, for example, that it, you could decide that you're going to do um, a single dose simulation where you're going to want your concentration, your plasma concentration, to reach, say, three times IC50 at uh, 48 hours after a single dose. So we're going to implement that. And finally, the same kind of idea, um, actually, uh, between um, zero and T hours, uh, CF. So it's the same kind of idea, but for um, CF. OK, so those are the proposals around um, those uh, calculation. And bioavailability prediction. So bioavailability is 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 obviously um, a, a tough area for um, prediction and uh, for human uh, bioavailability prediction. Um, this proposal um, comes from Xenologic, and really the idea is that. Um, they're proposing that it's well known, obviously, you can break bioavailability down into several components. And um, this here, it's broken down into fraction absorbed, the fraction available after interstinal, any interstinal metabolism, and fraction available after any hepatic metabolism. I should say that these definitions are not necessarily the ones that everybody would use. FH in particular, um, people might more commonly think of as the 
um, fraction extracted by hepat hepatic metabolism. This is the way this equation works. It's, it's the fraction left after um, any hepatic metabolism. So uh, the idea here is to be able to um, estimate bioavailability for human using a component where you estimate um, FA and FG from the animal species and FH from the predicted clearance. So um, essentially the, the equations are down here. And then there's, there's a worked example here. So um, essentially if you take the, uh, the, the, the blood clearance and liver blood flow for um, animal, uh, in this case, um, mouse uh, with a blood clearance of 30 and uh, a system value of liver blood flow 90 mils per min per kg, then um, this FH, uh, the fraction remaining after hepatic metabolism, comes out at 0.67. Um, you plug in that to this idea, then you can get an estimate of the FA times the FG for mouse. And the suggestion is that you can then use that in this top equation as a way of estimating human bioavailability using the predicted human clearance um, and essentially derive uh, bioavailability prediction. Essentially, this is obviously far from perfect. On the other hand, um, there aren't good ways really of estimating this. And at, in the PK tool at the moment, uh, it assumes that bioavailability is one, unless you tell it otherwise. So um, this is perhaps at least a, a somewhat more realistic method than just assuming it's gonna be one. Then the final potential enhancement that we're actually um, got on the, on the list of things to do, as it were, is um, this idea of predicting uh, the microsomal and hepatic, hepatic binding um, based on uh, log D or log P QSAR equations. Um, the equations are these. They were developed, I think, in AstraZeneca originally. Um, there's a, a, a fairly recent publication which summarizes uh, this information and links back to the original papers. Um, so, so that would be the proposal that we could include uh, predictions of, of these values from lipophilicity values, essentially. Um, of course, log D is uh, a concept that requires pKa estimation um, for acids. So, um, you know, that may or may not be easy to do, uh, but I think we would uh, implement this by asking you to input a log P or log D value for your compound and then use this equation as appropriate. Okay, so that's the scientific enhancements that we'd like to put in. So if you have opinions on that, would be great if you could add those into the chat box or if you um, you know feel so inclined uh, you know just give us an email afterwards so now I'm going to go to um, actually using the PK tool uh, version 2 and um, take you through some of the steps uh, to, to doing that so as for version 1 it's free to use um, and the source is available and can be used within limits. So the, the, it's, um, the, the specific license under which it's usable is uh, available within the source code and um, within the T's and C's that you um, acknowledge when you uh, use the tool. But it, essentially it means um, if you are going to use the source code to uh, use your, to develop um, further enhancements, um, if you want to make that a commercial tool, then, then you need to make those enhancements public. Okay, when you start up the tool, you will get a small blank window, um, which depending on how fast your machine is, could be a little while before you get the screen up for the PK tool, and um, you'll get these uh, the T's and C's, which you just have to accept. This is what it looks like. So it looks pretty similar to the old tool um, in terms of the layout. We've tidied it up in uh, one or two places, um, but essentially it's, uh, it should be fairly familiar to you. So I'm just gonna go through the screen now and just explain the different steps. So um, the menu options let you uh, open an existing parameters file. There's obviously one um, available to you in all the download information that you can use as a template. Um, and I'll show you the format of the file in a minute. Um, and also the name of that file gets displayed on the top here. 
Um, you can also uh, save that and you can save, save it as a new one. So you can edit that, um, th those parameters obviously in the tool, put in your own parameters, or in fact, you can edit it. It's only a CSV file, so you can edit it as a text, text file if you want to. Um, also, this simulation that you get down at the bottom, you can export the data associated with that. So essentially the X and Y coordinates um, as, a, as a CSV file as well, if you want to graph it in some other package. This is, the, this is the parameters file, so you can see the top part of it, um, labeled in vitro, contains a bunch of parameters, oh sorry, in vitro and in vivo, a bunch of parameters for, for different species. You can create your own species in the final column. Um, these are the units. Um, some of the parameters allow other units, you'll see that in the tool. And then uh, the bottom section um, requires some additional information for the simulation. So this is the default um, parameters file that, that sort of ships with the tool. You can obviously uh, create uh, your own. One thing that I, I mentioned that we've been keen to do is add quite a lot of um, tool tips. So pretty much every, every part of the screen has a tool tip coming up and we've, we've um, extended the text associated with those descriptions. So you can see just a couple of examples of them here. On the top left uh, is where you input the values that you've got from your in, vit in vivo and in vitro uh, ADMI and PK experiments. Um, so the tabs allow you to obviously put in um, parameters for different um, species and, and the tool can uh, actually calculate um, things like clint values from in vitro measurements if you haven't got those. So obviously to do that, you would need to know things like the half-life and the incubation volume and various other things um, which uh, are explained further in the, the detail of the slides. You can either do that or you can put in the clint values if you've been given those directly. So the upper right panel, um, that gives you uh, a graphical summary of the key PK parameters, um, the absorption rate constant, uh, the um, volume of distribution, and the unbound uh, clearance across different species, uh, including human. So these three graphs all relate to um, the uh, different, different species, um, essentially by, uh, distributed by weight on the x-axis. Um, so the values plotted on the graphs are for the whole organism plotted against body weight. Um, obviously, you'd be more familiar with those individual values, usually per kilogram, um, but these are per body. Um, and they're also unbound, so protein binding has been taken into account. Um, so the blue crosses are derived from in vivo data. The green crosses or circles are derived from in vitro experiments, um, measuring microstomal stability or hepatocyte stability. Um, so the green line in each graph uh, it's not a line of fit, it's the allometric scaling line. So um, that allometric scaling is based on the idea that various metabolic processes scale as a factor of body weight. Um, now, and as I mentioned, a new feature of the tool is that you can enter your preferred values for the slope of the allometric scaling line. So you do that, that down here. Uh, the purple circles are the allometric scaling values that the tool has predicted for human. And um, you can use, uh, you can choose which species to use as the basis for allometric scaling at the top left of the panel. So um, up here, you can choose uh, the minimum weight or you can choose one of the other uh, species that you've got data for. If you've got data for several in vivo species, you'll obviously be able to see how well the data fits the allometric scaling line. You can see that this data set, uh, which I think is somewhat um, made up, uh, fits the allometric scaling line pretty well. Obviously not, not all data is going to do that. And you may well have plenty of situations where you don't have anything like as much in vivo data as this. On the clearance graph, you'll also be able to see how well the in vitro clearance values fit the in vivo values. Um, it's frequently encountered that the, uh, the in vitro values will underestimate the in vivo clearance, um, but you'll at least see some idea of that. The vertical lines 
on here are uh, threefold, um, which just is, is there really to give you some idea of what to expect from just experimental error. Okay. The tabs for each species up at the top here, um, they show calculated properties that you might find useful. Um, so for example, um, the in vivo section shows the unbound clearance um, calculated based on allometry alongside that from the user into data. So it's essentially um, in mils per min per kg terms um, or mils per kilogram terms, it's the values that are plotted on the graph, but um, this time per, per kilogram. For the lower section of the panel, um, the right hand side is where you can enter your own values for allometric scaling. And then um, that obviously changes the slope of the green line that connects the, uh, and, and therefore the position of the purple um, human PK parameters. Um, just here, we've added one uh, column to the middle panel so that we can now show both the total um, i.e. the bound and also the unbound values per kilogram for human from the allometric scaling. Um, so if you use allometric scaling, these are the values that will be used in the simulation and copied over to the left-hand column. Okay, so um, the left-hand side, this shows the PK parameter values that will be used to carry out the dose prediction and plasma concentration time course graph. So um, you can manually edit any of these values if you want to and just by checking the box and then it'll use whatever values you put in here. So this really is the key um, set of, of parameters if you want to make a dose simulation. The rest of the tool, all the rest with, of the stuff I've been explaining so far is about how do we get values uh, calculated from the PK parameters that you've got into these boxes here. So um, you can, within not too many limits, do pretty much anything you like, provided you are prepared to be responsible for the values that you enter in, uh, in these boxes here. So as I mentioned, uh, currently there isn't an estimate of bioavailability. Um, we just, it's just one. Um, so you can use that um, equations that I mentioned to try and predict it, or you can put in um, something from um, animal. Um, but at the moment, it's, it by default populates it with one. So another important point, obviously, is that the PK values all assume that you want to estimate PK parameters for a 70 kilogram human. Um, so if you want to estimate those for a different species, you can do that, um, changing the weight uh, from the from 70 kilograms to the weight of the species in question, obviously. Um, okay. To complete the dose simulation and the dose prediction, you need to enter some um, parameters here. So um, the dose estimate currently works by making the assumption the goal of dosing the compound is to reach a steady state uh, where you want to maintain plasma concentration all times above the CF concentration. Okay, so uh, you must put in a CF. You can use uh, different um, units if you want to. Uh, if you use molar units, you've got to have uh, molecular weight in there. Obviously the dose interval is going to have a big impact and the simulation time um, as well. And then you can choose uh, the route of administration. So the calculate and simulate button does all the parameter calculations and simulations at the same time. So most times the tool will run if you're missing data but you won't get a dose prediction. So it doesn't usually crash, um, but you may well find you don't get a dose prediction if you're missing data, particularly, essentially, if you haven't filled in, if you don't have values in all of these boxes. Um, well, strictly, you don't need values for clearance and half-life, these are, it's one or the other. And then you must have, obviously, some values for some of these parameters down here. Uh, so, um, the absorption rate constant um, comes from an oral PK experiment. Um, come back to that. 
uh, volume, um, obviously from an oral experiment, um, though, you know, if you want to just put a thousand in there, you can, if you don't have volume information and you can set the absorption rate constant to one, if you don't have any um, in vivo data. The clearance, that can be derived by the tool from allometric scaling or from in vitro properties, um, so human hepatocytes or human microsomes. Um, FU plasma, obviously, that's going to come from an in vitro experiment. Uh, bioavailability, we've talked about. So um, you're going to have values for, for all of those. And then you choose with this pull down menu here um, where, the, where your clearance estimates coming from. So from allometry or from um, in vitro, and you choose between hepatocytes and microsomes. If you want to, um, you can also edit the dose size. So uh, you can um, ask some what if questions by, by editing the dose here. Okay, so the, the concentration time course, um, you can manipulate in several ways. Um, so, well, this is, I guess, a summary of the, of the data that you need. So you've got to have values in this, uh, these boxes here, and you've got to have values um, in the, the boxes here. The C safety um, is optional. That's just going to plot you a line uh, uh, in, the, in the simulation. If you want to, you can get the tool to plot multiple um, concentration time course graphs. So if you choose the option for a multiple run, it will just um, keep piling different simulations one on top of the other. And you can export all of that data from the file menu um, with an export simulated CT values. And if you've got multiple concentration time courses and they'll be numbered and the dose prediction is output as well alongside the concentration time graph so if you want to graph those in some other tool you can do that okay so um, one perhaps last note um, some other icons up here you can use this um, magnifying glass to zoom in. It's, uh, if you click on that, you, you just click and drag the area of the concentration time graph you want to zoom in on. Um, the house resets you back to where you were. And this uh, save icon actually exports the image of this plot if you want to do that. So now I'm going to go through some examples which I've gone through in a previous presentation, but now working through using version two. So I uh, mentioned allometric scaling, this idea that um, various metabolic uh, properties um, scale with the weight of the species. Um, and so by default, uh, we're using these exponents. Um, so the first example is going to be making a dose prediction using allometric scaling. So uh, obviously, we need to put input the in vivo data. Um, there's the test inputs um, file that's available to you. So we just open the parameters file, and uh, and and that populates with the ide idealized data. Um, so we're focusing on obviously the the in vivo um, data here. So hello, is there a question? No. Um, when calculates pressed, you get um, just uh, see what's going on. Okay. Uh, when calculates pressed, you get the clearance estimates. Oops, I'm trying to get rid of this window. There we go. Get the um, PK parameter estimates for uh, that calculated from um, the in vivo here and. Uh, uh, calculated now of the unbound clearance, for example, and the unbound volume. Um, there's some uh, text here just explaining um, how uh, the values in the, um, the here relate to each other. Okay, so the unbound relating to the total and the, um, the free fraction. 
uh, and how the values on the graph relate to these different um, values. So the graphs give you an idea about how the different species relate to one another. Um, and here's some more maths just uh, uh, indicating the, the clearance unbound per body and how that relates to um, the, as, as an example of, of how that relates to the clearance in mils per min per kg. Obviously that's um, uh, total clearance in mils per min per kg, which is the value here, which we need to take forward into the simulation and how that relates to um, what's come from allometric scaling. If you change the species that the allometry is based on, then obviously the green line will go through the uh, clearance and volume and um, absorption rate constant values for that different species. Um, so you can do that if you want to. That might be one of the what-if questions you might want to ask. Um, what's the difference between the human dose prediction if I scale from mouse or from rat? You might want to ask how sensitive is the dose prediction to the slope of the allometric scaling to, for example. So following this through, um, we've predicted the human clearance volume and absorption rate constant. Um, we need to put in the free fraction um, and uh, the bioavailability and then the other parameters that I mentioned here. So um, the CF, we've had some conversation about that, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but for CF and C safety, what that gives you essentially is um, the, C the CF is the concentration at the moment, the way the tool works, uh, that must be reached at, um, so that uh, CMEN equals CF at steady state. And that blue line will be plotted, that's the CF caches will be plotted on the concentration time graph and C safety is also plotted. So that's more thinking about, um, it, it gives you a visual way of, of looking at perhaps how the C max is related to um, the safety concentration and, and roughly um, you know, where you are in relation to uh, the safety margin. So the, the tool calculates predicted human dose um, per kilogram per dose. Okay, so uh, this, if you're dosing twice a day, um, this is going to be, this is roughly five mg per kg. Um, and it's gonna be, you have to give five mg per kg, so that's 350 mg twice a day, okay? There's a confidence algorithm here which is, it's, it's only a rule of thumb, but essentially uh, if you're only going to get a green, which is a high confidence, if you've got at least two species of PK and uh, two species oral PK in agreement with in vitro or three in vivo species in agreement. So um, it's quite a high bar in terms of the confidence. Uh, and that's because there are lots of things obviously that can affect um, human dose prediction and lots of ways for this to uh, to go wrong. So the, uh, the, it's, it's meant as a, as a rule of thumb, but you will frequently encounter times where um, this is read with a low confidence. So following those slides through, you get a prediction from in vivo data. If you want to make a prediction, a human dose prediction using in vitro data as the source of your clearance prediction, um, then uh, that's what the next the next few slides are about. Um, obviously, allometry for clearance is only possible when you've got in vivo data. Uh, so the alternative is based on liver microsomes or hepatocytes, um, and you use this pull down here to determine which. In terms of how that works, um, we've previously gone through the, the theory of this in a certain amount of detail. So I've included the slides for reference here, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Um, but these are the 
uh, these are some of the equations that are used within the tool um, and demonstrating how the uh, ultimately the, the blood clearance estimate is derived in this case from microsomes um, using various system parameters to do with um, how much, how many microsomes, how many migs of microsomes do we get per gram of liver in this species, how much liver is there per body weight, um, and also uh, factoring in plasma protein binding and also binding in microsomes. So on the tabs to the top left of the tool where we're looking at each species and you're inputting your data that you've got. The tool comes um, preloaded with various system properties. That's the system properties of each species to do with um, cellularity and the uh, amount of um, microsomes per gram of liver, liver blood flow and liver weight per body weight. And then you input your in vitro numbers. So as I mentioned earlier, you might have a Clint value you've been given by the person doing the in vitro measurement for you, or you might have just the half-life and some information about the experiment. Um, you can then use the tool to derive a Clint value. And uh, that's what I've done here and compared it to um, the values that the CRO gave us. And uh, we're in violent agreement, which is always good. is the similar thing for hepatocytes. As I mentioned at the moment, we don't make any correction for um, binding within the hepatocyte assay. Uh, so it makes correction for plasma protein binding, but not binding within the assay. So that's one thing that is a proposal to, um, to make that uh, change, to add that in. And this is this equivalent, just showing an example from hepatocyte experimental data to uh, the hepatocyte clearance estimates. Okay, so this is just an example now, worked example showing um, using the in vitro estimate. In this case, we've got the in vitro estimate of Clint from hepatocytes for humans. And um, that carries through to the human clearance blood prediction in the way that I've just described. And um, then uh, along with pr properties for parameters for um, absorption rate constant and volume, um, you can use that to calculate the human dose prediction as before. I mentioned that you can use this to look at how your in vitro experiments compare to in vivo. Um, so you get some feeling of how closely these different predictions of clearance align. Finally, the final example I want to go through is just briefly um, selecting compounds for efficacy studies. So um, obviously this is in a situation where there's much less information um, and sometimes no in vivo PK at all. Um, so how might we come to some estimates of some of these parameters. Uh, so FU plasma, um, there may well be a good correlation with the felicity. Uh, I certainly have seen that and used that in, in a series I've been working on. Um, volume, um, obviously you can estimate that from allometry if you do have PK in another species. Um, there is that equation that I mentioned earlier, which um, there's a one equation for neutrals and bases and another equation for acids. So that's a QSAR equation relating lipophilicity to volume. Clearance, obviously we're going to get that from microsomes or hepatocytes. Um, and we'll also need uh, the plasma, free plasma concentration and um, the blood plasma ratio. Sometimes people assume the latter is one. Of course, these are all dangerous assumptions in some cases, but that's nevertheless sometimes done. Helps if you've already done it for other members of the series, of course. The bioavailability, we've just talked about the potential to make some predictions about that. The absorption rate constant, um, unless this is uh, quite unusual, this um, tends to have a lower impact on dose prediction 
much of the time. Um, if you make it large, then the Cmax will tend to be early in the simulation, so fairly early in the plasma time course. If you make it low, so if the rate of absorption is low, you may have a, a delayed and somewhat lower Cmax. But unless the numbers are towards the extreme values, it has perhaps a lower impact on um, the dose prediction than some of the other parameters. You can obviously um, try out different values if you don't really have much idea of what yours is and see what impact that has on the dose. There are some slides in the end of the deck about deriving the absorption rate constant if that's not something that you have to hand. So in order to do that, you would need a plasma um, concentration, experimental plasma concentration graph from an oral uh, PK experiment. Um, obviously, if we are predicting for a different species, um, you don't want to leave the weight at 70 kilograms. So these are the values ultimately that you need to, uh, this is the, the, the key column as I mentioned before, of values you need to put in and you can um, change the, the weight to the species that you want to predict for. Um, and uh, in this case, we're using an estimate of clearance from rat hepatocytes and um, with these different uh, values we get an estimate it's still labeled human predicted dose but in this case we're now using it's a rat predicted dose um, a bit of a frightening rat predicted dose in this case but nonetheless this is a way that you can sort of fool the tool into giving you predictions for different species i think i touched on this um, manipulating the plot, so I won't go over that again. Just to say that I did forget to mention that you can uh, change the Y axis to a log scale if you want to. So clearly you can use the tool to ask what if questions and particularly this idea of um, setting it to allow you to do multiple runs so you can see how the different uh, simulations or what if questions compare. So this is just showing uh, the impact of, of doubling the dose. Um, so you can set the dose if you check that box, put in your own values. Um, and here, uh, the impact of um, different dose values. Uh, so you could, for example, use this to have a discussion about your efficacy study and the difference between um, doing a once a day or twice a day experiment. And also, um, I've certainly used it in the past to talk about the difference between um, what is nominally twice a day uh, and doing it every 12 hours or eight hours, then 16 hours, because clearly you're going to get a much lower trough concentration after the six, uh, during the 16 hour leg than the eight hour leg. Although obviously um, I can see why people don't want to do 12 hourly dosing. Final slide, PK um, analysis and predictions from of, of human uh, dose and, and indeed um, efficacious dosing. Uh, it's it's clearly a tricky uh, thing. It's something that people spend a lifetime um, studying and uh, this tool doesn't change any of that. Um, so the tool uses uh, a one, comp one compartment model. Um, so it's characterized by a linear log concentration versus time graph in terms of the um, the, the, the terminal phase. Um, and sometimes, often, um, two or more compartments model the concentration better. Um, so uh, this, this tool is just using a one compartment model. Um, and there's plenty of other things that can happen and reasons why the extrapolation to man uh, may not be as simple as the tool may suggest. Um, obviously, there's plenty of places to go to get further information, um, but uh, your friendly PK, the MPK expert, is uh, well worth talking to in uh, all circumstances. So, thank you very much for listening. I think there's a little bit of time for questions if anybody's got any.
Has anybody got any questions? Uh, Anas, you've unmuted yourself. I, I have one quick question. Uh, what's the minimum amount of data you can get away with? So I think it comes back to that key um, column, which is this one, the values used in predicted dose and simulation. So you have to populate that for the tool to work um, with, with, with numbers. I guess another way of asking your question may be where do those numbers come from? Um, so I think you could, if you are in the early phases of trying to compare compounds, um, and especially if they're from the same series, um, estimate Ka as being one, if you don't have any PK experiment at all. Uh, volume, I guess I would start to look at compounds with similar physchem properties where the volume information is known. So um, tools like Data Warrior have reference collections of known drugs where volume information is uh, available for quite a lot of them. Yeah, so I'd be inclined so to use that. Mm -hmm. um, I think clearance, uh, I, I think you'd be on very shaky ground if you don't have some experimental evidence for clearance. Um, so I would say you must have at least a microsomal or hepatocyte data um, to to use to derive your clearance information. FU plasmas, you know, again, from your series, you could probably make a reasonable guess as to what the free fraction might be based on uh, evidence of analogs. Um, bioavailability, that's a tricky one, especially if you haven't done anything in vivo. Um, but I guess one will give you a best case scenario. Um, There'll be plenty of compounds that'll be a lot worse than that. So Fortunately, you, weight is relatively straightforward. <laughs> so would you recommend um, reading in the test file uh, and go and using that as a, as a starting point? Well, I, I think it, if you haven't used the tool before, that's a great place to start. Clearly, um, it may not be relevant to your particular um, case. There's a lot of in vivo data in there, which is probably totally irrelevant to your case. So I think it's a great way to explore the tool, but it's probably not a great way to um, start to estimate uh, values for your compound. Okay. And, and as, a, as a quick suggestion, would it be worth colouring uh, the boxes that have to be filled in? Uh, could could be yes. I mean, what what you have to do is you have to have these values, yeah. and you have to have the. Um, in fact, I've got a, the slide, haven't I? Um, those are the boxes that you have to fill in, which yeah. looks like a lot, but actually, most of this is because I've got you know things on top of things. So it's that column and you need clearance or half-life, and then CF, dose interval, simulation time, and route of admin. You, you could just colour the labels to make it clear. Yeah. These are, the, these are the ones that we want to fill in. Yeah. Good idea. Do you want to put up your first slide, the one with the, with the pole on it? Perhaps we can get, get some feedback from people. Yeah, that would be great. So could you just type, in, people, could you type into the, the chat box what you, what will be more, most helpful for you? No responses so far? We, we did have one earlier from, from Matthew, which said two, three, one, four. Ah, oh, we're getting some in now. Right. Uh, Lee's all says two, three, one, four. So it's exactly the same. Claire says four, full stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any more for any more? Uh, Douglas says three, two, four. So four is looking particularly popular. 
also all or none of uh, certainly valuable opinions too so um, or you, any other suggestions or, yeah <laughs> other suggestions if, if you have them i guess we are planning essentially one more version um which will contain the most important scientific enhancements um we had originally intended to do one two and three but i see you know everybody so far has requested four so um i don't think that'll be too difficult to include um so we can certainly look to include that as well great thanks everybody um any more questions last call for questions no no if there are no more, then uh, just remains for me to say a huge thank you to Mark for putting all this together. Um, please feel free to go and download the tool now. You will find it much easier to run and much easier to much easier on the eye. You won't have to squint at the numbers on on the scales of things. Um, I think this is a great improvement, and I hope you enjoy using it. Thank you, Caroline, and one last thank you to um, to. Uh, Cal and Ola in Dundee who've given me some uh, extremely valuable feedback. So uh, thanks very much to those as well. They've been um, testing some earlier versions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.